In this video, we're going to discuss an important concept related to Construct's event system, and in truth, to programming in general, variables. It's impossible to create a game without the ability to store and refer to important pieces of information, and this is in fact what variables allow us to do. It's important to keep in mind that computers only remember the things we ask them to. This is where variables come in. We can define variables within Construct's event system that help us keep track of the critical bits of data that we need throughout the life of our game. Most programming platforms restrict what can be stored within a variable by certain so-called data types. In Construct, you can store numbers, text, and Boolean values in a variable. Boolean is just a fancy word for true, false, yes, no type binary values. Creating variables in Construct, as you might expect, follows the same point and click and complete the dialog process that you are already well familiar with. Variables should be given a unique, meaningful name, then assigned a type, initial value, and an optional description. Construct supports making a variable immutable, in other words, unchangeable, by marking it constant. This is a standard programming paradigm too. Similar to high-level programming languages, Construct's implementation of variables supports the idea of scope. Scope is just a fancy word for where a variable can be used or is accessible. Construct supports three distinct types of variables, each characterized by their different scope. So-called global variables are accessible everywhere. They have a global scope. Local variables can only be accessed within the block in which they are defined. They have a limited local scope. And an instance variable stores information relevant to an individual object you place in your game. It has a limited object level scope. Watch out for these two icons that you will see when working with Construct. The globe identifies a global variable that can be accessible project-wide, whereas a location pin signifies a local variable that is not accessible outside of its immediate block level scope. To clarify the difference, let's take a look at an example. This example features both a global and local variable named health and pain, respectively. Health is global and can be accessed anywhere in the project, including other event sheets. Pain can only be accessed from within the damage event group that it is defined in. The health of our player is important information that should be shared far and wide, while pain is simply used in a calculation. Its value really isn't of any importance beyond its current block. You have a lot of options when working with variables in Construct, such as the ability to use expressions when working with their values. Variables can be changed dynamically and may have their values assigned from the result of some calculation. In this example, I'm setting the value of the health global variable to the result of the arithmetic operation of health minus pain. Instance variables are powerful because they allow you to keep track of information relevant to individual objects in your games. You define instance variables for the object type and then set the value for each instance of that object type. In this example, I've created a Boolean instance variable named active on the player object type. I can in turn refer to this value when programming my game. Allow me to demonstrate the three different types of variables you will be using in your games. This is a simple demo project that I have put together called Stairway to Heaven, which just so happens to feature global, local, and instance variables as central parts of the functionality. The alien collides with the lever, and then the stairway is programmatically built so that the alien can reach its goal to collect the coins. Let's take a look behind the scenes. First off, I use an instance variable on the lever named isPolled. This allows me to know important information about the specific lever the alien collides with, namely whether it's been pulled or not. Then, inside my Stairway to Heaven event group, there is an event that checks to see whether the alien has collided with the lever. See how it has a second condition that checks the isPolled instance variable? I'm making sure that the lever hasn't already been pulled. This is a perfect example of using an instance variable to track important information about a particular object. What about globals? Global variables are positioned at the top of the event sheet. In this project, I have a global variable named score. 
This score variable is global because it needs to be accessible far and wide, even potentially in other event sheets. Whenever the player collides with a coin, we update the value of score and redraw the scoreboard. This is a perfect example of what you might use a global variable for. Lastly, let's take a look at locals. I am using locals throughout to help me do the algebra involved in positioning the stairs. No one else really needs to have access to this information, so I keep its scope limited to the block it's defined in. You don't need to understand how I'm using each variable per se, but I want you to see how I defined the local variables at the level I needed them at. The variables like x1, y1, and m are all variables only accessible at their level of nesting, their level of indentation, and below. We would not be able to access any of these variables at a higher level or in a different event group. Local variables are perfect for these types of complicated calculations. These block level types of variables are often referred to as scratch variables in other programming contexts.